This simple chicken dish is packed with so much flavor, green onions and ginger and garlic, and then served with all the condiments that just elevate this chicken to a whole different level. And I'm gonna show you how to make it. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, Dude is behind the camera, and we're all about simple food, simple faith. This Hainanese chicken dish goes back many, many years, but the kids just love it, and it has become a favorite that we make all the time. This recipe can be found in my new cookbook, Chinese Home Style, so let's get started. We have a three pound chicken, and I'm going to stuff it with all the aromatics garlic and ginger and green onions. But first, I am going to remove the butt from the chicken, and we're gonna use that for later. This piece right here where all the fat is. Oh, and any excess fat that you can take off and remove. So let's just start here. There's always a little piece of fat that hangs on either side of the butt. So I'm gonna take that off, take the butt off, and take this piece of fat off as well. And we're going to fry that up later for the rice. Into the cavity, I'm just gonna stuff my green onions. And I don't wanna overstuff it because sometimes what happens is if it's too stuffed, then it doesn't cook all the way through. So I'm gonna to try to loosely fit this green onion in there. Like that. I have a total of four ounces of ginger, but I only need two ounces right now for the chicken. So I'm gonna take this piece. I'm just gonna smash it a little bit. And I'm just gonna slice this up. Half of this, maybe not half, but part of it. Slice that up. We're only using three cloves of garlic for this part of it. We're saving the rest for later. And you just want to smash your garlic so that more flavor will come out. Okay. We're going to Put as much of that in there as we can. All the garlic, and then maybe half the ginger, and then the rest of the ginger, we're just gonna toss into the, the water. And that's it for the chicken. All right, so this is how we're just gonna leave it. It doesn't wanna stay, that's fine. Okay, so before you get your chicken started, bring a pot of water to boil. I've added a tablespoon of salt, and I just used sea salt. I filled the pot about two thirds the way full. So you don't want it completely full because you need the chicken to go in there and the water will rise when you do that. I'm gonna tuck the chicken wings just behind the shoulders. Okay, and we're gonna drop this in there, breast side. Up. I'm gonna put the remaining ginger in there. And I'm gonna immediately turn the heat down to a bare simmer. It's gotta be quite low. You want the water to be still on top, so this is still, and we're going to poach this for about 50 to 55 minutes. And I'm gonna put a lid on. So meanwhile, while that is poaching, we will get the rest of our ingredients ready. So while the chicken is cooking, we are making the condiments. And for our family, the chicken would be nothing without the green onion and ginger condiment. And that's why I make so much of it. So I'm using six stalks of green onions that I'm going to chop. You know, I'm gonna grab my other knife. All right, see, my kids and my husband. My husband. Dude. dude. 
I don't know how you guys can eat all this, but they love it. And most of this will be gone for dinner tonight. There will be hardly any leftover for tomorrow. And you all know that you can easily cut this in half. It's not like in stone that you have to use all six stalks of green onion. You can just make two even and just cut down on your ginger. It's basically equal parts green onion and equal parts ginger. So usually I would just peel the ginger, but I scrubbed it pretty good today, so I'm just gonna leave the ginger on and I'm gonna grate it into my green onions. This is about two ounces of ginger and I can't even say it's a giant thumb size because it's not. It's way bigger than our usual giant thumb pieces of ginger. I love using the microplane for this. Yes, I cheat. I use whatever tools are at my disposal to make the kitchen job easier because you all know I can't be bothered with chopping up ginger into fine, fine pieces or into like practically a paste. See, look at this. You're not gonna get that unless you have massive knife skills, which I don't have. And that's about all you get. About half, half ginger, half green onions. Looking good. I'm gonna use the Instant Pot to make my rice. You can also use the stove top to make your rice, but it's easier, I think, to do it using the Instant Pot. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Turn the saute mode on, and I'm going to adjust it to high. First, I wanna heat up my oil for the ginger and green onion sauce or condiment before I work on my rice. And I'm gonna use the same pot so I don't have to clean multiple pots. And that's another reason why I'm using the Instant Pot. While I'm waiting for my pot to heat up, I'm just gonna prepare my garlic. So I'm just gonna run it through the garlic press and I need three cloves. And this is going into the rice. This is not going into the condiments. Okay, I am adding about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. You just want a neutral oil here. Wait for that to heat up a little bit until you start to see it smoke a little bit. I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of kosher salt to the green onion and ginger. If you're doing this on a stove top, make sure you're using a hev heavy saucepan, maybe a, at least a, a three quart saucepan. And I'm just gonna put the oil in Just cooks it a little bit. And I'm gonna stir this up. I think that hot oil, it just infuses all the flavors. Yeah, it does. Brings it together too. Oh my goodness, it smells so, so good. Again, if there was smell vision I could share it all with you. The pot is still hot. I'm gonna add my chicken fat. Remember that fat we saved from earlier? And we're just gonna render this fat until we get about two tablespoons of fat, oil, flavor. You want to move the chicken fat around a little bit to make sure that all the sides are getting cooked and we're getting all the juices from the fat out as much as we can. I find with the Instant Pot it's easier to do it on the side because it's not completely flat at the bottom. Okay, we'll just let that do its thing. Meanwhile, make sure you prepare your rice. So I'm using jasmine rice. I have three rice cups of rice that I've already rinsed and drained. All right, I think that's all I'm gonna get out of there. So it's approximately a tablespoon or so but I need two tablespoons, so what do I do? Right, can everybody see? Right, that's about a tablespoon of oil. Okay. So I'm just gonna add another tablespoon of vegetable oil or whatever oil you're using. Okay, but we do want that chicken fat in there because that's where all that flavor is. And even though we're adding some oil, there's still lots of flavor so I am going to toss in my garlic. 
Now that I put the chicken fat in there. I'm just gonna let that cook for a few seconds, moving it into the fat. Okay, we don't want it to burn, so we're gonna immediately put our clean rice in there. And let this saute until all the rice is a bit toasty. We don't want the rice to stick to the bottom because if it's sticky at the bottom, the Instant Pot is going to freak out and think that something is burning. So let's just keep moving this rice around so that it doesn't stick at the bottom. And then we're gonna turn it off until our chicken is done. And we're gonna use the broth for the liquid in this rice. This is not your average white rice, people. No, this is rice that goes with your Hainan chicken. All right, I'm gonna cancel. Just let this sit here for a little bit until the chicken is ready. And there's still about, I think, 15 minutes for the chicken. And you may wanna check on the chicken every now and then to make sure that that water is just staying still and it didn't like start bubbling and boiling again. If you let the water boil again, your chicken will cook faster and then it might be overcooked and you don't want that. You want the chicken to be perfect. And that's another reason why I prefer making the whole chicken on the stove top versus making the chicken in the Instant Pot because I have way more control over when that chicken is done and to take it out of the water immediately. All right. Oh, it smells so good. I have a bowl of ice water that I've filled halfway. If you do it in the sink, you can add a little bit more water. We are going to shock this chicken so that it doesn't continue cooking. I'm gonna pull this out so it's easier to grasp. Just leave it in the soup for now. All right. Add a little bit more water until that's covered. And we're gonna leave it in for only 10 minutes. And that is not going to chill your chicken until it's cold. It'll still be hot. It'll just have stopped the cooking. So the proportion of rice to broth today is going to be one part rice and one and a quarter part broth. I'm gonna add just a little bit to begin with and make sure that the bottom is all scraped up that there isn't anything sticky at the bottom. So I find with the Instant Pot is if there's anything sticky at the bottom, it's going to give you an overheat or burn message, and that's not good. If you're doing this with a rice cooker, um, I'm assuming that you sauteed your rice and garlic on the stove and you're transferring it to your rice cooker, which is perfect. I'm also making sure that all the rice is pushed down and will be covered with liquid. Nothing is sticking to the sides of the pot because if any rice kernels are sticking to the sides, they're not getting cooked properly. So in your rice cooker or your Instant Pot, you should have these lines. They correspond with the rice cup that came with your pot. So I am using again, one to one and a quarter ratio, which I will need it to go up to the fourth line. So that's what I'm counting on here. If you're doing this on your stovetop, you're going to need a little bit more broth. So just keep that in mind. I'm a dough head. So that instruction was actually for stovetop, one to one and a quarter ratio. For the Instant Pot, it's only one to one. I don't know what I'm thinking. So I'm taking out a cup. Putting a lid on, locking it into place, making sure the sealing knob is on sealing. And we're going to cook this on high pressure for four minutes and let it natural release for 10 minutes. And that means your pot will still be on keep warm during those 10 minutes and then turn it off. I have an English cucumber that I'm just slicing up and we're gonna line our plate with it, our platter. And we're gonna place our chicken on top of it and all the sauces are going to soak into the cucumber. And that's pretty much the only time my kids really, really love cucumber. 
be lining up the cucumbers. Just have them kind of overlay each piece. You can cut them into whatever shapes you want. This way is better. Ta-da! Okay. Now for the chicken, the fun part. Okay, we're gonna remove the chicken now from the ice water. Okay, I'm putting it on a board. With Hainanese chicken, when you go to a restaurant, you are either going to get it with all the bones still attached and then you just eat around the bones that are all chopped up or some restaurants will serve it boneless and that's awesome. I like to actually serve it boneless partly because I can never chop a chicken the way they do in the Chinese restaurants. So I'm gonna show you how to debone a chicken. I'm gonna cut off the legs first. I'm gonna slice in between the breast and the thigh. We'll slice on both sides. And in here you will find that there's some juices. And as you can see, it's still piping hot inside. It's not um, cold. Okay. You're gonna cut where that joint is. There's also a piece of bone right here. So we're gonna cook, cook. We're gonna cut just around it. And this is where we'll slice. Okay. There's cartilage there, so that's why the knife is, can easily cut through that. And we'll do that the same on the other side. Now I'm gonna cut the drumstick off the thigh. And if you hold it like this, cut straight down, there's another cartilage that you can cut right through. Same with the other side. Okay, I'm gonna do the drumstick first. I'm gonna run my knife around the top part here because that's where there's some tendon, like this part here that really is not great to eat. And then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna slice down one side of the drumstick and just keep going. Oops. There's also a bone in here, like a very thin bone that I'm trying to avoid. Okay, so that's a thin bone here. Nope, that wasn't the bone. Where is it? Lost it. In any case, trust me, there's a bone there. <laughs> so what I will do with these bones actually is throw them back into the chicken broth and boil it some more to add some more flavor to it. And then I'll store that broth in the freezer for future use or save it for tomorrow and have like soup noodles or wherever, wherever I need like Asian style chicken broth, I will use that. Oh, don't forget the chuck. Oh, or make jook with it. Chicken congee, so good with this broth. The rice is now cooked. The four minutes are up and we're going to let it natural release for 10 minutes. I'm gonna slice up the chicken just into smaller lengths. Okay, I'm gonna take that. I usually like to put it, all the dark meat on one side. Okay, so for the thigh, turn it over where the bone is. And what you wanna do is slice it where the bone is, right there. Okay, and I'm just going to roughly take this bone out, get underneath it. The, and the meat should just kind of fall right off. It's not tough at all. Okay, then you're left with this lovely piece of thigh that is still holding its shape. And we're going to slice it thinly as well. Side. Okay, now I'm going to remove the wing 
And again, if you hold the chicken up, just slice right through, which make a liar out of me. <laughs> I can't find it. You can do it, I have faith in you. There we are. Okay, I don't know what else I cut. I cut more than the chicken wing, I think. But I'm just going to cut the joint between the wing and the drumette. That should be fairly easy. I don't know if you caught that. And I'm gonna leave this tip. Oh, I'm gonna take the tip off. Although some people like eating the tip. Leave it on? Leave yeah, it on. Leave it on. Okay, we're just gonna leave it on. Okay, put it on the side along with the drumette. Same on the other side. Now we have the breast left. Okay, so right in the middle of the breast is the breast bone. So we wanna cut on one side of it. And you can feel it. Just slice down. And we're just going to kind of peel it off the bone. You see? Let's gently take it off. Look at how juicy that is. That's the only time I don't mind eating chicken breast is if it's really juicy. We're gonna slice this as well into small pieces. I don't know if you can see how moist it is. You see? It's perfect. So this chicken was exactly three pounds. So if it's more than that, like a three and a half pound, I would add another 10 minutes to your cooking. And I really wouldn't use a chicken that's too much bigger than that. I think at the butcher, they were offering me five pound, six pound organic chickens. And I'm like, yeah, no thank you. Because I have no idea how much time it would take to poach those for one, and there's no way we can get through a six pound chicken. It's like a small turkey. Okay, there's one breast and the other. All right, so it's 10 minutes done on a natural release and I'm gonna turn it off, but I don't have a clean finger, so I'm gonna ask dude to cancel it. Thank you. All right, the last of the chicken breast. All right, okay, almost ready to serve. Last few things. Have some ground white pepper, just a few pinches. We're just going to sprinkle it kind of all over the chicken. And I'm going to mix one tablespoon of light soy sauce, or regular soy sauce, whatever you have and one tablespoon of sesame oil. I'm gonna stir that around. Make it as blended as possible. And then we're gonna drizzle this right onto all the chicken. Oh my goodness, looks so, so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have some cilantro here just to pretty it up. I'm just gonna use a few sprigs. I understand that not everybody loves cilantro. So if you don't like it, don't use it. You know what, it's nice to just garnish it, but, and you don't have to eat it, but it does make it prettier. Okay, the rice is ready. Everything is ready just on time, so. That's why this recipe is so easy to do because it's, you're not like not working, but at the same time, everything just gets done and you get a yummy meal at the end. Oh my goodness, this rice that smells is so good. All right, and see how it's yellowy? That's from the toasting of the rice and also from the chicken broth. All right. What piece do you want, dude? I'll do a little bit of both. All right. A 
Oh, make sure you get some cucumber in there. Oh yeah, that's a must. And some breast meat. Mm -hmm. it doesn't look so great plated. Sorry, dude. Oh, it's, we're not about the fanciness here. All right. And what else? Don't skimp on this. <laughs> Don't hold out on the girl. All right, there, is that enough? All right, all right. No, more. <laughs> You're hilarious. Before right. the kids get to it. There we go. Are you all ready for? Yes. Have you had dinner? Not yet, huh? This is the taste with dude. I am not Uncle Roger, but I am from Malaysia. So, back to just regular dude. Now, Malaysians eat with fork and spoon. It is the most efficient way to eat most every type of food, especially this one when it comes to rice and the different elements, you bring it together, so efficient. Let me show you. And using that spoon, you can bring it all together in one perfect bite. Perfect delivery system for all the awesomeness. Gonna get some cucumber in there and rice. See? Perfect bite into the mouth. It goes. Mmm. Mmm. So good. The reason why the ginger and onion is so crucial is because it just brings in that pop of flavor. That bit of spiciness from the ginger with the texture of the nice juicy chicken, the crunch of the cucumber and the aromatic rice. Guys, and it just mixes it all in there. So much flavor, that's why you gotta have it with the condiment. If you don't have the condiment, don't eat it at all. Don't be wasteful, you must have condiment. Lots of it. So as you can see, it really is a very simple recipe that you can do. It's not quick, but it is simple. A lot of people also serve it with a chili sauce on the side, which you're free to do. We don't often eat it with the chili sauce, but if you like that, by all means. Both this recipe and the Hainanese chicken leg recipe are in the cookbook. And for that recipe, check it out. I will see you over there.